Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the most common frustrations when you're on a low carb diet to lose weight. And if you don't know how to overcome these frustrations, they can really discourage you and sabotage you from reaching your weight loss goals. Now some of the frustrations we're going to talk about, they really deserve their own separate videos. So this video is going to be more of a broad overview of just some really helpful information that will help you get back on track right away for your weight loss goals. And the word low-carb diet can conjure up a lot of different ideas in people's minds, but this is fundamentally what we're talking about. Getting rid of the bread, potatoes, pasta, dessert, sugar, all of these carbohydrates and sugars that trigger too much insulin from your pancreas, and that extra insulin signals your body to store more fat. So if you don't get rid of these foods or if you don't cut them dramatically, it doesn't matter how much exercise you do, how many calories you cut, you're probably not going to burn any fat. But if you replace these foods with more good protein, more good fats, more vegetables, it's now possible to burn fat because your fat burning hormones can now become activated. And there are lots of good low carb fat burning programs out there. This is just a small sampling of the more popular ones right now and they're all great and they all have a lot of sound science to back them up. And even though there are some minor differences in each of these programs, they all have the same basic fundamental plan. Get the carbohydrates down so that insulin levels can come down so that your body can burn fat. Now, if you don't have a good low-carb book and you want to get started on a fat-burning diet right away, you can watch my Intro to Burning Fat YouTube videos. And in about 20 minutes, you'll really have a better understanding of how you can use foods to stop triggering the fattening hormone insulin and start triggering fat-burning hormones. So definitely pick up one of these good books for more details, but you'll get the basic ideas of all these books just with those videos. But what if you're doing all the right things with your diet, you've cut out the sugar, you've cut out the bread, but it's just really slow results. You step on the scale each week and it's only half a pound that you've lost, maybe one pound, and you just get discouraged and think, this isn't working. So frustration number one on a low-carb diet is slow results. And a lot of that frustration comes because we've been brainwashed into thinking that any diet or exercise plan that's going to work for weight loss is going to work about as quickly as this lady is losing weight. This was a real ad that I found. We've seen so many ads that say lose 20 pounds in 20 days or lose 30 pounds in 30 days that we think that that's the way it's supposed to happen. And when it doesn't work that quickly, when you do the right things but the pounds don't magically melt off quickly, that can be frustrating. So how do you overcome frustration when you have slow results on a low-carb diet? The single most important thing to overcome that frustration is knowing that even if you're eating perfectly, the max amount of fat that your body can burn per week is about one or two pounds. So if you're losing one pound per week, that's great. It's working. Now water weight can come off much faster. The people that lose weight quickly on a low carb diet are losing lots of water weight because too much insulin also triggers water retention as well as fat storage. So it's really fun to lose water weight quickly, but when you've lost the water weight, and you're burning fat, things will slow down to about half a pound per week, one pound per week, and if you're lucky, two pounds per week. And there's no reason to be frustrated with that. That's how your body works. And if you can be patient, stay on the low carb program, you'll reach your goals. Another thing that's helpful is to smash your scale with a hammer and stop looking at it. As you know, the scale usually brings nothing but frustration, especially if you're checking it every day. Don't stand on that thing more than once a week because remember, you can only burn one to two pounds of fat per week. What will be much more encouraging and motivating to you is if you focus on how your clothes are starting to fit looser and how your waist measurements are changing. That's a better indicator of success than what the scale says, especially in the first few weeks when you start a low-carb diet. It's really motivating and encouraging to see changes in your body shape even if the scale doesn't lead you to believe that much is happening. Now the only thing that's more frustrating than slow results on a low carb diet is when you have no results. So you've got the right book, you're following it perfectly, you haven't touched bread or sugar for two weeks, three weeks, a month goes by, and you haven't lost a pound. You haven't lost a single inch off your waist. And you're naturally gonna think, this diet doesn't work. I'm trying something new. I'm going back to pasta. And that's totally natural to feel that way when you've worked that hard and nothing's happened. So what are some reasons for no results on a low-carb diet when you're doing the right things but not getting rewarded for it? 
this is definitely a topic that we want to do a whole separate video for because a lot of things can interfere with you being rewarded, but here are some of the major ones. Too much of the stress hormone cortisol definitely can block fat burning hormone, and a lot of things, a lot of different types of stress can increase cortisol. Second one, sex hormone imbalance. Uh, men that are slowing down in testosterone production and women during menopause can really have a hard time burning fat. If you have a testosterone or estrogen imbalance, that can make it harder to burn fat, even when you're staying away from carbs. Third, a sluggish thyroid. When you have a sluggish thyroid, you're going to have a sluggish metabolism. And even if you're doing the right things, you're just not going to burn fat effectively. Along those lines, a hypothalamus problem. That's a gland in your brain that regulates your appetite and influences your metabolism greatly. So that's another very common hormone dysfunction. Uh, the next one is a major roadblock to burning fat, sleep deprivation. Poor sleep is a huge roadblock to losing weight. You'll have an increase in carb cravings if you're not sleeping well. You're going to make more stress hormones like cortisol if you're not sleeping well. You won't re release as much growth hormone that you need to burn fat. So there are a lot of ways that poor sleep can keep you from being fully rewarded on a low-carb diet. So we'll talk more about how to overcome all those problems in a separate video, but we're going to take a minute to talk about this last one on the list, toxins that are known as endocrine disruptors. Endocrine disruptors are becoming a bigger and bigger problem in contributing to stubborn weight gain. These are toxins we're all exposed to that can interfere with our fat burning and fat storage hormones. And just one of the categories of toxins that can interfere with our thyroid hormones are brominated flame retardants. Everything you see in this picture is probably treated with flame retardants. And eventually these flame retardants break down and are absorbed into our bodies. You see on the top left, pretty much everything in that bedroom has flame retardants. The mattress, the curtains, the lampshade, the television. Most furniture is going to be treated with these flame retardants. Carpet has it. Most electronics today, like your computers and cell phones, they're all treated with these flame retardants. Baby cribs, a lot of the clothes we wear, we are surrounded by thyroid hormone disrupting flame retardants. And as we mentioned on the last slide, if your thyroid hormones aren't working properly, it's going to be much harder to burn fat. But you might ask, do all these flame retardants that all of these products are treated with, does it really get into our bodies? And the answer is yes, it definitely gets into our bodies. This is from USA Today 2003 flame retardant found in breast milk. Toxic chemical used to make furniture, foam, and electronics fire resistant is showing up in high amounts in the breast milk of women in the USA. Two studies found that all of the women tested were contaminated with polybrominated diphenyl esters, PBDE. That's the flame retardant we've been talking about. Uh, PBDE levels were the highest in the world, 10 to 20 times higher than those in Europe. And then look at down at the bottom. Levels of PBDE flame retardant in humans are doubling every two to five years. So this problem isn't going away. It's getting worse. We're getting exposed to more and more of these flame retardants that are disrupting our thyroid hormones. Another big source of endocrine disrupting chemicals is pesticides. We get pesticides on our food, mosquito trucks here in Florida, our lawns, and one of the worst ways to get pesticide exposure, having the inside of your home treated with pesticides. A lot of these pesticides can interfere with your hormones. And just a quick glance about how much pesticide exposure we get just with our food. This is from the USDA. In 2004, 88% of lettuce they examined had 47 different pesticides. 77% of green beans showed 24 varieties of pesticides. 57% of wheat flour showed 16 pesticides. And look at this, 98% of apples had 33 pesticides detected. So you can see right away, apples are great. You want to get them organic for sure. Look at this scary stat at the bottom. 100% of milk sampled showed evidence of 12 pesticides. And in over 96% of the milk, DDE was found. And DDE is a metabolite of DDT. DDT was banned in 1972. So even though it was banned 40 years ago, it still persists and stays in the environment. And we get it in the food, which then affects our hormones. And more sources of endocrine disruptors. The water we drink has both fluoride and chlorine added to it. Both of those can interfere with thyroid function. And that's why it's so important today to have a good water filter. A reverse osmosis filter will filter out both chlorine and fluoride. Speaking of fluoride, there is some good fluoride-free toothpaste out there. But the vast majority have fluoride added. 
This Colgate toothpaste you see here has both fluoride and triclosan, which is an endocrine disrupting antibacterial agent. Triclosan is also an antibacterial hand soap, sanitizers, a lot of the antibacterial products you see out there. And women usually have a higher exposure to endocrine disruptors because most cosmetics and perfumes have them. And on the bottom right, you see oral contraceptive pills. They tend to have weight gain as a side effect. They're an endocrine disruptor. Same with any hormone replacement therapy. So flame retardants, pesticides, the food we eat, the water we drink, our toothpaste, the cosmetics we put on our skin, even receipts that we handle after purchasing something many times have an endocrine disrupting chemical BPA. That's been found to be absorbed through our skin and disrupts our hormones. And you can see in the last 10 years there are more and more studies being done showing the link between these chemicals and the obesity epidemic. And yes, reducing your carbohydrates is the most important thing to promoting weight loss, going on a low carb diet. But you also have to address this issue of endocrine disrupting toxins. And this is your biggest ally to help you deal with all those endocrine disruptors you're exposed to. Your liver. Your liver really is an amazing organ that's able to chemically convert highly toxic substances like pesticides into harmless substances that your body can then just get rid of through the kidneys and the bowel. So the better your liver is working at detoxification, the better you're going to be able to neutralize the harmful effects of endocrine disrupting toxins. Your liver also regulates the effects of many hormones in your body. Hormones like cortisol, estrogen, testosterone, growth hormone, and even thyroid hormones. These are all influenced by the liver. So this is a make or break issue. If you want to burn fat, if you want to get rewarded on a low carb diet, you have to have a healthy liver. And why do so many people have livers that don't detoxify properly? A major reason is we don't typically eat a lot of these foods that you see here. The liver needs very specific nutrients to chemically convert toxins into harmless substances. And foods like cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, Spanish black radish, those cruciferous vegetables have very rare nutrients like sulforaphane and indole 3 carbonyl that are powerful compounds to help protect us from toxins. Foods like carrots and beets, those help the liver, but they also support your gallbladder, and you have to have a healthy gallbladder to remove toxins from the body. So we may eat these foods occasionally, but typically we don't eat them enough. We're exposed to so many toxins every single day that we have to have our livers working optimally every day to deal with these toxins. And a great way to get the benefits of those vegetables is with the SP Cleanse formula from Standard Process. This formula is a major part of the popular 21-day purification program for weight management support. SP Cleanse is very complete, comprehensive detoxification support. It has the cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, kale, Spanish black radish. It has the beets and the carrots that we mentioned. And as you can see, it has a lot of other herbs and foods that support kidney detoxification, lymphatic system detoxification, and bowel detoxification. So this is really complete support. And in today's world, with as many toxins as we're exposed to, it's not a bad idea to just do a bottle every three or four months, even if you eat vegetables on a semi-regular basis. In a formula that I love for daily detoxification support is Livaplex. Livaplex has Spanish black radish that you see in the top left. In my opinion, that's the most effective cruciferous vegetable to support detox. It has carrots, it has the beet root, but it also has the green beet leaf. And most people don't eat the beet leaf, but that's just as important for supporting the liver and the gallbladder as the red beet root. And on the bottom right, you see liver. Liviplex has a lot of liver extract in it. We used to eat liver in this country. That used to be a very common thing, but it's kind of fallen by the wayside. And that's a shame because liver is the best food source of B vitamins, iron, and zinc. And the mineral zinc is really important to protect us from toxins also, especially heavy metals. One more food we have to talk about that helps you deal with endocrine disruptors is sea kelp. Sea kelp specifically helps to minimize the toxic effects of fluoride, chlorine, and bromide on the thyroid gland and thyroid hormones. Those three halogens that we get in our water, our food, the flame retardants that or surround us in many other sources, the more of those halogens we get exposed to, the more iodine gets displaced and depleted from our body. And you've probably heard about how important iodine is for your thyroid gland. And if your thyroid gland isn't happy, 
it's very hard to burn fat even on a low carb diet so sea kelp is a great food source of iodine and if you have enough iodine it's much less likely that those halogens are going to slow you down on a low carb diet sea kelp is also a great source of sodium alginate which helps detoxify mercury and other heavy metals so it's a great detoxification food it also in addition to iodine has at least 70 trace minerals that are all important but that we have a hard time getting enough of in the american diet so sea kelp is kind of like the ultimate mineral food specifically for iodine and specifically for our thyroid gland the reality is we're not going to eat a lot of seaweed typically in this country in japan they still eat sea kelp but it's not going to happen here by and large so you really need to use supplements to get sea kelp and the ones that i use typically would be things like mintran trace minerals b12 organically bound minerals and thyroid complex any one of those is going to be a great way to get sea kelp into your diet so good strategies for helping your body deal with the endocrine disruptors that you can't always avoid number one definitely eating more cruciferous vegetables whether it's broccoli brussels sprouts kale whichever one you like eat more of if you like beets you definitely want to get more of those in your diet use a bottle of sp cleanse for strong comprehensive detox support at least a couple times a year and for daily maintenance support doing some liviplex and make sure you get a good trace mineral supplement with sea kelp such an important part of a good weight management strategy so on that we're going to take a break pick it up in part two and talk about how to overcome some more really common frustrations on a low carb diet